few months ago I have done a sensational trip to the Baltics. In this video I'm not just going to explain why we should visit this area, but also I'm gonna share three reasons why we should extend our trip a few days longer. Welcome to the beautiful Tallinn and Stone. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Alejandro. I'm an engineer based in the UK, and on this channel, we explore the engine that helps us live a more purposeful life. So I was in Tallinn, the capital of Estonia, when we were still allowed to travel a few months ago. I expected to see a cultural city with mainly Russian influence and relatively something to see in 24 hours. Fortunately, I was very, very wrong. I stayed five days and it was absolutely stunning. Bear in mind I'm not the same guy like 10 years ago doing five countries in a week. These days I'm a slow traveler. Perhaps the older I get, the more I enjoy chewing the places I visit. I feel like sometimes it's worth spending extra time to get a better flavor. Yes, I get it. We have a full-time job and we don't have much time, but hey, these are just thoughts and how I enjoyed my trips these days. So let's talk about these three reasons why we should stay longer in Tallinn. I want to save you time, so I'm leaving timestamps below. Feel free to skip and watch the one you actually care. But before starting, I need to offer my apologies to the Estonian people watching, as many of the places I'll pronounce during the video might not be in line with the Estonian language pronunciation. So, sorry about that. Number one, Old Town. Let's recap. Estonia was once a socialist republic, but in reality the Estonian culture takes little influence from Russian culture and instead positions itself closer to its Nordic neighbors like Finland. Since gaining independence in 1991, the country has joined the EU and has firmly positioned itself as politically, economically and culturally Western. From my perspective, this is the best preserved medieval city in Northern Europe. It looks like a fairy tale with unbelievable Gothic spires, cobblestone streets, barns and stunning architecture. In fact, it's been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1997. To me, the old town feels mystical, mesmerizing and addictive. It was once a home to wealthy merchants settling from Germany and Denmark, but today, hey, it's a different story. It has plenty of restaurants, bars, museums and galleries bringing so much life to this historical city center. In terms of accommodation, we stay at the Hotel Telegraph and it was super, super well located. There's absolutely no need to stay there, but just because I had some extra points, I decided to use them and it had been a really good deal. Actually, let me know in the comments below if you want to know why and how I manage to consistently get these perks. From the airport, we can definitely take the tram, but because we were two and it was quite late, we got a bolt. We pay like five euros or six euros to the old town. Remember, Stony is a house of bolt. We're gonna talk about Estonian startups a bit later. Getting lost in the alleys of Tallinn Old Town is a great idea. There are passages everywhere. One particularly interesting is St. Catherine's Passage. It was built by monks back in the 13th century, so it's absolutely great. Nowadays, the medieval spark is still there and the atmosphere with artisans and exhibitions gives a little bit more of a modern look while still preserving the ambience. It's actually a great place to see Tallinn from the top. Uh, this place is called Kotwotsa in the northern side of Tompia Hill. This is a viewing platform where we can see the red roofs and the towers of the old town. In fact, if we have good eyes, we can see in the background the Gulf of Finland and the port. There's so many other places to see, such as the Big Hermann Tower, um, Tompia Castle, uh, Schnelli Park, and the Town Hall Square, the Alexander Nevsky. Nevsky? 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 All right, let's talk about food. The old town has some amazing places for dining too. The one we enjoy a few times is called All the Hansa, perhaps the most authentic medieval dining experience in town. Waiters and waitresses are dressed in the traditional costume as if it was 700 years ago. 
and they have dishes with centuries of history. All beers are handcrafted according to the medieval recipes and, and they served in the old traditional style ceramic char. The place is full of candles, benches, tables and it really gives you that medieval vibe. I personally loved the mushroom soup and the golden lentil pot. For vegans, there's many places in town, but the one we enjoy a lot is called Vegan Restaurant 5 or number 5. They opened like 7 years ago, small but super cozy. I tried the spicy oven baked seitan tacos with cheese and guacamole. Christina tasted some incredible beetroot ravioli with cashew cheese and basil pesto as starter and some vegan fish and chips which is tofu, deep fried potato, tartar sauce, green pea and mash as a main course. At the end of the Soviet times, shops were empty and desserts were a luxury thing. Luckily things have evolved. For something sweet, we enjoy a place called Chocolala. They do local handmade chocolate and they have a wide range of fresh assorted chocolates, bars and truffles. They even offer us to taste some before buying. So it's 100% risk free. You like it, you buy. You don't like it, you don't buy. Number two, coffee and art. There's something about Tallinn and coffee. Perhaps a bit of a Finnish influence, but there's some sensational coffee shops everywhere. There are three that I want to quickly mention. And again, this is not a sponsored video, but our real and humble experience. First one is called Sol Lisana. It's an amazing coffee shop with a Scandinavian vibe, candles and great echo. Tons of alternative milk for vegetarians and vegans. I had many coffees here, but what I loved the most was the berries and nuts bowl for breakfast. The other one is Paike Lisana. It's the same owner, but the smaller coffee shop. You have to be lucky to get a table, but you can do takeaway in any case. The other one was Tormor. This is likely having coffee in an art exhibition gallery. It's just insane. You will see the pictures and, and videos, but it's just absolutely insane. We tried some cabbage bread with local hummus and it was super tasty and creative. I feel like the coffee experience in Tallinn was just so real. When I think about coffee for me, there are two factors. A, technical. This is about having a good balance of acidity, sweetness and bitterness in one sip. And I'm by no means an expert, by the way, but that's how I like it. B, how does the place make me feel? And this this is even more important than the technical side. For me, having coffee is not just to drink something hot, but it's taking a break from the reality. It's like an open eyes meditation where I pay more attention to what's around me while I release some stress. So it's super important the context or the place I'll be buying my coffee. In many places in Tallinn, I found myself in, in the right atmosphere to enjoy coffee, which ultimately improved my state of mind. Number three, brain expansion. When I think about Tallinn, I try to think about the context. So I think about Estonia itself, and there are so many different things contributing to their success as a society. And we can see a lot, obviously, in Tallinn, because one third of the population live there, right? But I wanna share six real examples. First one, first female president and youngest of all time. In October 2016, Estonia elected its first female president, becoming the first woman and youngest person ever to hold the position in the country, age 46 at the time of her election. Number two, digital society. Estonia has also fully digitized its government services and it was the first country in the world to allow its citizens to vote online in 2005. The country is often referred as the most digitally advanced society in the world and all government services are available online. It's what they called e-Estonia, from voting to signing documents online. Number three, free public transport. The city also rolled out free public transport for residents in 2013 and is now making around $20 million a year in profit from the project. Number four, Silicon Valley of Europe. Tallinn is often called the Silicon Valley of Europe as it has more startups per person than any other European country. Many of these small businesses have actually grown into global companies like Skype. In fact, Estonia's economy and culture is heavily focused on technology. In 2000, the country declared internet access to be a human right and has since established hundreds of free Wi-Fi zones. So traveling throughout Estonia is incredibly sleek with Wi-Fi hotspots all over the country, even in many forests. Number five, clean air. Perhaps not surprising given the amount of green spaces that they have, like 50% of the country is forest. But Estonia has some of the cleanest air in the world. The country ranks right up there for clean air indexes with other sustainable countries such as Finland and Iceland. Six, education. They have 99.8% literacy rate and most of them speak multiple languages besides their native one. So it's not strange to see them speaking English, Russian, German, and finish. 
There's no doubt Estonia is modern, progressive and highly developed. The country is considered high income and consistently ranks highly in education, press freedom, quality of life and overall human development. If we forget about the challenging winters life in Estonia, doesn't sound too bad, does it? And Tallinn is definitely a place I love to come back. If you like this video, you might also want to check this video over here, which is about my epic trip to the Scottish Highlands. Thanks for watching and see you next time.